You're listening to the Kingdom Flow Podcast. I'm Kyle Jones. And I'm Ian Sperry. Now more than ever, we're in a time where Christians need to rise up. Business owners and corporate executives have a great opportunity to capture hearts by living out their faith, holding the line that's being challenged every day. Listen in as we work to uncover ways to help you live your life by design and challenge the norm by breaking down barriers and truly encouraging you to go all in on your faith. Also, don't forget to leave a review and subscribe to the show on the platform of your choice. Let's go. So, Father, we do come before you right now asking that you do bless the show, Lord. And we just pray that, um, God, that you just use the words that are about to be spoken to uh, to bless somebody as well. Lord, you've blessed us so much with um, with our conversations and uh, we know that you, others have been blessed as well, and we just um, we ask for your continued grace over this show. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for the coffee. You're welcome. Um, well, I feel even more official. So as we continue to add things into our studio, JJ, our camera guy, our guy behind the scenes, got us these nice little stands so Legit. you can really move around and not have to worry about hitting the mic. Feels so free right now. You could fold your arms. I can you move can, my coffee cup here. Drink your coffee. I got the iPad in front of me for when I have notes. Feels really good. So, so good. So are you ready for the new year? You know, we're, we're coming in. We've, we're just a few days away yes. from the turn of the 2024. Yes, what are, I am. What are you most looking forward to? Um, Just, uh, oh, hey, these new mics are... They're close. They're man. close. They're close. Um, Don't be kissing those. Uh, <laughs> that's just, that's just happened. I'm, like, I'm rubbing my chin on it. Um, I think I'm just ready. I just like new chapters. Yeah. I'm not necessarily, there's not like a big, like, I'm ready for this to happen. Or I'm ready for this to stop. I'm just, I like new, fresh starts. I do too. I love Mondays. I don't I, necessarily. I actually do too. I love, a lot of people hate Mondays because it's over the weekend, but. You know, it's your weekend's done and you start the week, but I actually really look forward to Mondays because it's like, okay, we got a fresh start again. I don't really like Wednesdays. Hate Wednesdays. <laughs> We've never right had this conversation. It's the worst day of the week because it's right in the middle. <laughs> right in the middle. Yeah. You're, you're too far removed from the freshness right. of the week and you still got a couple more days before the weekend. Wednesday is, it... is the pinnacle of the mountain as yeah. far as the week goes. And then it yeah. goes all downhill. So do you have, you have the Wednesday morning blues instead well, of Monday morning blues? I don't know if I have blues, <laughs> but it's just, I don't, I, it's not my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, actually it's. It has. I just thought of this too. That's actually one of the longer days for me, typically, especially come baseball season. Yeah, because when baseball season happens, I usually have two practices. Double headers. I got. I got the both boys going back to back. Yeah, from start to finish, that's a long day. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Wednesdays, yeah, Wednesdays are no good. No good. But every day is is a day of the Lord and is blessed. So we're gonna keep <laughs> that keep that hope going alive. That's good. Yeah, uh, but. Um, no, as it is, this is this is the, officially the the last podcast of the calendar year. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we've taken some time towards the uh, you know end of the year. We've had a couple podcasts where we kind of reflected, but I, as I was thinking about what we wanted to talk about for this one, I actually feel it was pretty clear, and it really didn't take me long to come up with a three point sermon that uh, nice. that we. <laughs> Three lessons points. from 2023. Kingdom flow. Lessons. Kingdom flow. 2023. It is. It, it, it really is, um, you know, something that I think holistically just, just where we're at and both of us are kind of in a, a similar spot with we, you know, it's, it's been more of a grind of a year, I yeah. feel like, uh, professionally. Sure. Uh, but we've still at the same time, we've, we've grown personally and yeah. with our families. Yeah. And so, uh, all that to say, you know, trying to have a conversation around this and, and add reflection in there. Uh, these are some, some of the main points that I think um, were personal to me. And I, and I know that you'll be able to relate, but um, you know, the first one, as we kind of reflect back on the lessons that, that we've learned from 2023, this is actually something that you just brought to my attention yesterday um, with a journal that you you were looking at, or your, I don't remember what it was. I think it was a journal, but, um, but when you said it, it really resonated with me and it put into words a lot of what I've been feeling. That's been very tough to describe, but, um, 
the the point that I put it in is there's peace in the purpose. Uh. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what I said because I say a lot of things. Well, I'll, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's how I'll frame it up. But yeah. I would like for you to talk a little bit about because it was it was kind of your uh, quantification of words that you put into it yeah. on on that, what that really means. Yeah. So it was in my devotion time yesterday. Um, in full transparency, I didn't necessarily, you know, the, the, the devotional itself had a tie to it. it I just kind of took it a little bit deeper as Holy Spirit was talking with me about it. But for me, it was, we always, as believers, we always ask the question, how do I know I'm in God's will? Or how do I know I'm doing what God has for me to do for my life? Yeah. And yesterday, it was just really clear to me um, through Scripture and through the the impression of the Holy Spirit that it is His peace that marks His will. Mm. And and so when you're walking in His in this supernatural peace, that is His stamp of approval that you are in His will, regardless of what the scenario or the circumstance looks like when there's peace there that is his we've talked about it before that's his winking that's his stamp of approval yeah that's his assurance that hey this is the gift that i give you this is a peace that's going to come upon you and you're going to walk in this peace and that's a in- sure indicator that you're in his will yeah um that is as i've reflected through this and through this year and even even further back and you look at scripture i think peace is one of the ultimate um gifts that god mm-hmm. wants for our lives obviously we have hope into the future and hope that we'll be with him one day in heaven and he wants us to advance his kingdom go yep. and make disciples of all nations but i think at first if we're not at peace with ourselves and with god and our families it's going to be hard to do all these other things. And I think peace is one of the the most gratifying things that I've come to find in my adult life that it was one of those things. I didn't know what I was missing until I had it, yeah. like true peace. Yeah. And I think that's where I am. I wish I would have, I wish I would have known we were talking about this because I would have brought my devotional, like what I actually wrote because, man, it was um, for me, and I realized too, it's not God that's the problem if I'm not experiencing peace. Yeah. It's me. Or it's what I'm putting myself in or what I'm putting my family through. And so, because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm not saying that you won't have to use faith to get somewhere, but the supernatural peace that I'm talking about, his stamp of approval right? Yeah. If I don't have that, it's not his fault. Right. If I don't have that, it's my fault. And I've got to pray and seek where the lack of peace is coming from. Yeah. And Holy Spirit's faithful to reveal it. And so I wrote down some things um, just personally. I'll share personally a couple of them, not you know to names, but some relationships. There's not peace there, right, within my family. And so either it's it's, I've got to figure out where that lack of peace is coming from. Um, financially for me, we, we, we do very well financially, but there's this, there's this small percentage that's not fully into peace. And I think, and as I was praying about it, I really feel next year is going to be a very, very difficult year for a lot of people. Um, just with the economy and just through prayer, I, I really think that's going to happen. I said this about, I don't know, three or four months ago. And so there was a little bit of as I was praying, why financially am I out of peace? I'm giving, I'm tithes, I'm offerings, I'm all these things. But I really got the word storehouse is not full yet. Mm. And so there was that little bit of peace that the Holy Spirit revealed, hey, the storehouse needs to be fuller. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, now I have direction. Now I don't feel um, away from peace anymore on that. I feel at peace going, okay. So I sat down with Michaela yesterday. Hey, we're going to tighten up a few things this year. Is everything okay? Everything's great, Right. But we're going to store up some things yeah. for what's to come, right? Um, and so those are just some examples of um, – but there are some areas of peace that are in my life. Like, hey, 
where like what I'm doing with the businesses and where we're going, you know, I feel peace about that. Like yeah. I feel released. I feel good about that. Um, where our family's at, I feel really at peace about that. Like I, I feel his approval. I feel his stamp of approval on the will of the Sperry family's lives where we're at today. Yeah. Um, and so I think, I hope that makes sense. Yeah. I think from, from a practical standpoint for me, why this is even a lesson that I've learned for this year is, is, is because of the marketplace. And, you know, I've mentioned it before, but this was a very difficult time to be in real estate. Yeah. Uh, especially with just high interest rate environments and especially how we've structured some of our loans and everything else. And, Nobody could have seen this coming sure. with the amount of interest rate hikes. So purely justified, yeah. but there is a lot of anxiety and angst around the whole marketplace. And the only way that I have, I feel like I've been able to just wake up every day is, is because of the peace that mm -hmm. is over the situation. Arguably, this has been one of the more stressful times in my life. Honestly, like I think back to when we had no money. It really wasn't it, like it was stressful, but it there's there's just so much more weight with what I have now. With yeah. you know, the, at a time it was just we just had Kennedy at a time when it was really really tight. Yeah, and um, now we've got two kids. We've expanded our lifestyle a little bit too. So there's sure. a lot of things that are also dependent on us, even outside of the family, because we have outside capital that we brought in and investors. And so you you talk about overall stewardship that could give you somebody a lot of anxiety when you know we we truly are in a place where we've done the best that we can given the circumstances yeah. of the marketplace yeah. and and so um and the last thing I'll I'll mention on this point that we can move on is it, it's just timely cuz I had this as I was praying I had this um this vision this morning that um was really just confirmation for me where it was like kind of like the Holy Spirit, like a cloud from the Holy Spirit was hovering over our house yeah. and just had, um, creating like a force field type, yeah. um, you know, protection layer protection around our house, sure. but it was, it was a protection of peace. It truly was. So, and I think that's a good, that's a great example of you can be in a storm, but be at peace. Yeah. You can be in a storm and still be in God's will. You can be in a storm. I think you've done a great job handling it this year. You know, I know a lot of people based on their personalities, based on, you know, um, their their lack or their, you know, where they're at with the Lord, that this would very much, you know, cripple a lot of people. And so um, when, when his peace- It hasn't been easy. Well, no, it has it not. Is, but it has been peaceful. It's been peaceful. And yeah. so that is, that's, again, that's just a sign and a stamp of approval going, hey, you're in a storm. The storm's not caused by me. This, God didn't cause the markets to do yeah. this, right? But you're in my will. You're going to walk, we're going to walk this out. Hey, I saw a picture of surrounding in peace. It, we're going to get through this. That's, yeah. that's the ultimate for me. That is the ultimate it, the yeah. like, the ultimate, like, high, the ultimate. Um, just, just feeling of protection and safety when I go, when I lay in my head and go, there's peace. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For it's sure. It's a stamp of approval. Absolutely. So first lesson was there's peace in the purpose. The second lesson that I think is very relevant for, for us, it really anybody is understanding the season that you're in. And really the, the easiest way to describe it is there's, um, and this is not just for professional, it's personal as well. There's a growing season and then there's a harvest season. Mm -hmm. So growing season is kind of a, think of it like it's time to grind. It's time to get your hands dirty, roll up your sleeves mm -hmm. and go to work. Whether that's in your business, your, your, uh, your marriage, or, you know, you're working on transforming the hearts of your kids, you mm -hmm. know, you're really trying to to, to, to till the land and, and work it. Yeah. And then the harvest is obviously that's when you get to reap some of the benefits of all the work that you've put in. Um, and I think there's even like, there's this um, ebb and flow of growing and harvest that is always continual. Um, but if you look at the course of over like a, you know, two to five year span of years and, and we, and we go back to 
what we've been focused on, whether that's, again, that's business or personal, there is a time where we've got to really get going. We've got to, we've Mm -hmm. got to work it. We've got to work the, the, the business. We've got to Mm -hmm. get in there. We've got to show up every day and really just set the tone, set the culture, reestablish or, or, you know, make sure that everybody knows the vision and reestablish the vision if you need to, and just constant reminder. Um, and then the harvest is where you can kind of pull back a little bit from that. There's, you know, for me, what I think that looks like is there's more rest involved yeah. and, and there's a, the ability to have, um, other opportunities to, to, to now bring in, in that season. But, um, you know, when you really understand the season that you're in, then you, then you can kind of know how you need to approach your day on yeah. a daily basis. Yes, yeah. man. I think. Again, didn't know we were, this is a great, because this has been a huge one for me this year. I think one of the biggest potential pitfalls or dangers for an entrepreneur, for a business person is thinking that harvest never runs out. And the season of harvest is always ongoing Yeah, to really identify the season. And I've, I did this this year through the help of a couple different people, but I have multiple businesses in realizing that just because multiple businesses are under one umbrella, you know, compartmentalizing them and re- realizing each of these different businesses, man, they're in different seasons within themselves. Right. And we've got to be able as leaders, we've got, and this could be for department heads. This could be for people over, you know, that are managing other people. This could be for even homes, for moms, right? Like, hey, one of my one of my kids is in this season or this harvest season in their life. They're just things are things are firing all cylinders, right? And then another another one of my child or children is is in this season. And we've got to be able, so like we literally, God is my witness. My wife and I were talking about this morning with our youngest, Luke. He's in a different season right now. He's in a very difficult, he he is a different, and it's like, hey, you know, um, we've got to really focus in on him and realize the season that he's in to make sure, not to ignore the other ones, but, but to make sure that he is growing the way he should be. Yeah. And I think that's the same thing when you're leading depart uh, you know leading different departments. Hey, one department may be doing well, but if you assume that because 3 out of the 4 are in harvest, then that means the fourth is in harvest, you're going to you're going to wake up one day and go, "Oh crud." Yeah. We've had a big big drop off here and and I didn't realize it because of the abundance all around me right. from the other areas. That was one of the biggest things for me this year was recognizing what season I was in and then attacking each of those groups in, in, in different ways, depending on the season that they were in. Yeah. And that's uh, like you were talking about. I think the, the phrase I'm hearing, that's part of the dangers of not knowing the season that you're in is because you could be really trying to grind when it is truly a time to rest and who do you neglect at that point? Generally, it's your spouse or your Absolutely. family or your kids. Yep. And at the same time, what you were just talking about, you it could be a time to to grow. And you're thinking that you're still in the harvest, harvest yeah. and you miss it, and you run out of harvest. Yeah, and 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 that's it's a scary spot a to scary be in. Spot to be in. Usually, and I've I've noticed this with the Lord. You know, with with my progression through business, through leading people, um, he he gives us enough uh, checks on the chin. To, to finally wake up and go, you know, if we're sensitive at some level to wake up and go, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm messing this up a little bit. So I was able to catch that probably mid-year this year of um, of changing some things around and readjusting. And so yeah. um, we just got to be aware as leaders, as business owners, as, as, as entrepreneurs, as mom and dad, we have to be aware of what's going on and what season um, each of our seed is in. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I actually uh, was reminded of this today, but when we interviewed Steve, and I think he said that his wife said this about him, and I and I think this is similar to where Luke is now, is his wife says he's extra, and I think My that is a great, right now. that is a great depiction and a word for Luke. 
my did I ever share the 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 word that I had for my kid? You you alluded to, to it, it, but you said it wasn't like the best encouraging okay, I'll word. I'll give so it, I'll, I'll say it just you're because. Open to yeah, it, yeah. Give it. So to each them. of our kids uh, for their birthday, I give them a word from the Lord. Um, and nine ninety nine for the last eight years with Caleb, or soon to be eight years, it's been this. I'm um, just really encouraging, and mm-hmm. there's been some some stuff in, along the way, but most of them. It's, so Luke's, I'm praying about it, and I saw a picture of two hedges, the exact same hedge, okay? Two hedge bushes. One of them was cleaned up, beautiful blossoms, um, just looked amazing. The other one was just like, you know, those yards that someone just never takes care of? Yeah. It's just all over the place. Yeah. The other one was that. It was just, you know, growing all over the place, vines all in it, all crazy. And um, and I saw a pair of shears, like a pair of cutting shears, and and the Lord literally was like, "You need to begin to trim now." <laughs> and I'm like, "Lord, he's three. And he goes, "Trim now." And I'm like, wow. "Okay, we're going to start trimming." Because I, the child is just—he's a dominant personality. Um, he's intense. He's hilarious. Yeah, but he's so sweet. At he's the same sweet time. at That's the same it. time. But he is—he's an intense right now. He's—he's he's intense for mom and dad. <laughs> he even reminded me we were hanging out last night. This was. So- <laughs> I don't know why I just got this picture too, but when he came downstairs last night and he, you know, his hair was wet and his, like the shoulders were wet and he's just like, this was like at, you know, seven thirty eight o'clock at yes. night. What he wanted to do was he just wanted to look handsome. Correct. He wanted to That's do his hair. Yeah. But what he reminded me of is like when, uh, when the guy on Step Brothers walks out after he was drumming the drums and he's just soaked in his sweat and he's just breathing hard, That's that exactly. was that what was Luke. Luke looked like. You know, it's <laughs> it's every this morning was a rough one too. So anyway, not not to you know get on him all day, That's but funny. but yeah, he's in a different season. Oh, um, so peace in the purpose. Yeah, understand the season you're in, and the last one that I think, uh, which we have done some episodes on this too, but I was just reminded of it, of how critical vision is. So vision is critical. Yeah. And, you know, there's a lot of verses that we can point to that highlight vision. And, um, you know, there's some famous ones, the one in Proverbs. Uh, I think there's another one in Habakkuk yeah. that um, says, you know, write the vision, yeah. make, it plain. make it plain. But I think one of the biggest things, um, or one of the ones that kind of gets overlooked that as I was reflecting and thinking about for me, keeping my eye on the vision for this year, especially in the turmoil of the professional world was in Haggai when he was talking about the, the former days are going to be, or the, remember the glory of the former days, but the days ahead of you are going to be greater. I'm paraphrasing of course, but it's, you know, it's deep when you're going to Haggai. It's, (laughs) Well, there's two chapters, <laughs> yeah, and it it really is. That's why I think, like, yeah, he he gets overlooked. But he was Haggai is one of the prophets yeah. that basically prophesied the second temple to yeah. be ring built. Yeah, and it's if you think about what was happening at that time, where you know the Israelites were, you know, they were just kind of sulking in their sorrows because yeah. they lost the temple because mm. of their own behavior. Yeah. Uh, but now Haggai comes in and the Lord is so graceful and gentle with the Israelites in this moment, in this period of time where he basically says, hey, remember where we were. Yeah. Now it's going to be greater in the future. Yeah. And when we think about that, that is, that's the hope that we have for the future. Yeah. We can't have hope if we don't have the vision though. Yeah. So we have to make sure that we truly take that to heart where we write the vision and make it plain. This is not vision boards. This is, this could be, you know, something else, but this isn't a, um, you know, putting all the, the fancy cars on a vision board, stuff like that. Um, it's, it's making sure that it's very clear on where you're headed long-term. This is kingdom thinking, it's legacy thinking. And then I think, you know, over the course of a couple of years, now you can, you can start taking chunks out on how you're going to get to that vision. Yeah. But if you don't have that vision, then it's going to be a lot harder to keep some of these other things. You're not going to have peace because you're not going to have yeah. the hope that you want. Yeah. And you're you're not really going to be able to understand the seasons as it as and flows if yeah. you're not, you know, living in a peaceful life. But also it goes back, it ties back to vision. If you don't understand the vision and there's no clarity there, 
then you're just going to have a bunch of family members going off and doing their own thing. Or like in the business world, you're going to have a bunch of employees that yeah. are just each trying to do their own thing. And yeah. they don't know what they're trying to do. I can't remember. There's a story. I don't remember who was telling the story, but um, it was supposedly there was some guy in at NASA that was walking through the halls and, you know, was just talking to various people. He came across a janitor and I'm sure people have heard this story, but there was a janitor that this person who was high level, I think it was an astronaut that was, um, I should have looked this up, but he was high level guy. The astronaut was, and he's talking to a janitor and he asked him what he was doing because it was, he was also cleaning the floors at like an odd time or something, I think is the context, if I remember correctly. And the janitor says, well, we're putting people on the moon. Mm. And it's just, that's such a huge testament with that type of response when you have a janitor mm -hmm. who sees himself contributing to putting people on the moon in that moment. Mm -hmm. And I think that goes, goes back to whoever established the vision during that time period made it abundantly clear on what everybody's role was to put somebody ultimately on the moon. I think that's one of the hardest things for entrepreneurs. And I want I'm going to even caveat it even more in Christian entrepreneurs to do is cause you, you made a great point is to get a vision, right? Is to get a true God vision because, you know, a lot of us have, or a lot of people have vision boards with, you know, the planes, the trains and the automobiles where it's about things. And what really God wants to do, I believe, in, in, in all of our lives is write a vision. You said write a vision, make it plain. He wants to write it on our hearts. Mm -hmm. He wants to write that vision on our hearts to where <clears throat> um, there is, when you're in these moments that you're talking about, when you're going through a tough time with the market, you know the vision. You go back to the vision, and it keeps the hope. It keeps the strength. It keeps you guys moving forward. Um, when you are in a rough spot with your kids, but you know where the vision is, you know the vision where God's bringing you, you see it, right? You know it, it's going to get you through those rough times going, no, no, my God's faithful. He's going to get us through this. And I think too, once you re receive a God vision, there's an excitement that happens. Yeah. I know for me this year, and I won't share it publicly, but I, I shared it with you. When I you know, they had this, you know, this macro vision where I want or I felt God was bringing me, but yet then there was this practical, like how I'm going to get there micro vision that just like, dude, it just lit me up, mm. right? It, ex it, it made yeah. me excited. Like there was two nights I couldn't sleep because I was just, I it was, it, I was just, I was so pumped up about it. I knew it was, it was a rhema word from God. I knew on the heart of my soul that He had written on my soul, yeah. and so, and then once you get that, not that faith um, is any easier, but faith is then activated when you get this this rhema vision or this vision from God, and you begin to walk out these things with your family, with your career, with your business, with all of these things, you begin to... I'm telling you, there's people listening right now that have had a business on their heart for decades, and they just have not done it. Yeah. They, ha they haven't walked it out. And, and I think this year, you know, you need to begin to look at that vision and begin to practically take steps to seeing it come to pass. But when you have that and then faith ignites it, um, man, it just, it, it, it just, it feels different. Yeah. It, it really does. And it really is the only way to describe it is it's, it's from the Lord. I just feel um, like I need to say this because we're filming this uh, or this is launching on the, the last week of the, the <clears throat> calendar year. And I think there's probably some people that feel like they don't have a clear vision, mm -hmm. um, maybe even for this year, but I think long-term. And I would just, number one, it's never too late. Mm -hmm. I think just because we're coming into a new year doesn't mean you have to have everything completely buttoned up. You know, the good thing about um, our lives and is, is, yeah, we have calendar years and we have new chapters that, that turn a page, but really like it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like start, start right now, start mm -hmm. where you're at and maybe set a goal for yourself over the whole month of January. Cause you don't really want to rush this and you don't want to manufacture this. You mm -hmm. don't want it to be man-made. You want it to be God ordained. And I think 
if you set yourself a four week time span mm -hmm. to really pray and meditate through this, it doesn't have to be every single day, but if you start praying now and quiet your mind and make sure you're in a quiet place to where you are truly like allowing the meditation to come in mm -hmm. and in the stillness, God's going to give you a vision for and, sure. And I do declare that. I think, I think that's a promise for all of us that he's going to give everybody a fresh vision if they just ask for it. Yep. You're going to get a vision. Then you're going to get scared because you're going to go, what the heck? But then if it's from God, his peace is going to stamp it hmm. and you're going to be able to walk it out. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you have a vision, okay, I want to, and it's, and there's not a supernatural peace attached to it. I would question if it's your vision or God's vision. Doesn't yeah. mean it doesn't have to be big. Yeah. In fact, it should be super big, I believe. Right. But there's got to be a peace attached to it. Once you have that vision and you see it, once there's a peace that we talked about at the beginning attached to it, you'll be able to walk it out by faith and see it come to pass. That's good. Yeah. Well, I think the only thing left to do at this point is, um, you know, that's it's been a great year. And I think we should high five. Dude, it has been a good year, man. It <laughs> it's really has been a good year, year. And it's it's a lot's happened. A we, lot has happened. We moved, we live on the same street. We moved. We started off with a bang. It's we, crazy it, to me to think when you really look back on a full year, what has really gone down. I mean, it really is nuts. Yeah. But it's been really cool and exciting. And I'm I'm real excited about 2024. Yeah, me too. The lessons learned for 2023. Peace and the purpose. Understand the season you're in. And vision is critical. It's awesome. Man. That's it. I'll close this. Go ahead. Father, thank you for today. Just thank you for your Holy Spirit just leading and guiding conversations. And and Lord, um, I just pray that this just this this conversation, Lord, just convicts in only the way that you know how to convict, in a good way, in, in, in a way that spurs people on and really calls people up, not calls them out. And, mm -hmm. and Lord, I just pray for 2024, for those that are listening, that it would be a year um, of clarity, that it would be a year of vision being seen and being acted on, Lord, that there would be a supernatural stamp of your peace and that, Father... Um, that, that the seasons that they're in, Lord, that they would be able to recognize it and be able to course correct and adjust accordingly to your spirit. Father, you are good and you have good plans in store for us as your children. And so, Lord, we just bless. Lord, we thank you first for 2023. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we're excited and we bless 2024. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for listening. We hope that you feel encouraged by today's episode. Help us reach the masses by leaving a review and subscribing to the show. We'll see you next time.